Good morning again, and uh, please help me and give a word. Welcome to Philip Muller and Regula Marti, from, both of them from Tamedia, how we manage an entire news, entire news platform change from our living rooms. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. It is a bit strange to talking to no one here, but I see that you are or I hope that you are behind the screen. So good morning, everyone, and welcome to our first talk this morning, where we talk about how we managed a platform change from our living room. So what is, the, what is it all about? So we, um, we are both working for Tamedia, so for the paid um, newspapers, the daily and the weekly. And um, for the last two years, we've actually been preparing to switch the entire system. So that is all the front ends, all the websites, all the apps, the CMS, and the entire process. So everything on, from the way on, of how a newspaper, be it in print, be it online, is produced, was going to be replaced in um, the beginning of this year. Um, the old system we were managed, especially the digital one, it was over 15 years old. So some of you might remember Windows XP. It's about the same age, so you can imagine that everyone was really looking forward to getting rid of that system. Now, to give you some perspective of how big this endeavor actually was, we have 50 locations throughout Switzerland in the German and the French part where we have journalists working. We have 15 different brands that we migrated, and all of them have a total of 39, or depending how you count it, even more front end. So that's websites, that's native apps for Android, native apps for iOS, and we have several CMS that we were replacing, some of them for previously for print, some of them for online. And all of that, um, all of that change actually has to happen while um, we have two and a half million readers, so one million roughly in print, 1.7 on uh, digitally and as you can imagine news doesn't stop so we could not just say okay on this day we'll not have a newspaper on this day there won't be any news when we switch no everything has to be done at the same time and on the other side we're actually 750 journalists that are concerned by this change that while still writing the news stories, they actually also have to change the whole process of how they do it. Here is a small glance of what we changed to. So, for example, the, the website has received an entire change. It looks very different now. And especially on the lower left side, you see the old digital CMS. And I actually had to log in just recently, and it, it charges so slowly, so I can really like just going back in time and remembering how it was to work with this thing is, um, yeah, it's been a pain. So that's where we, st uh, that's kind of the, the set we had to do. Thank you. Regula, b besides this um, technical change Regula mentioned with the new websites, the new apps, and also the new CMS everyone was waiting for. Um, there was also a big mindset change, which was part of this uh, big change project. As you can see here on the nice old picture of a newspaper, maybe when you see that picture, you can imagine how journalists have been working during decades maybe even during uh, centuries. Um, they came into the newsroom in, in the morning and they were just talking and thinking about today's print edition. We don't blame anyone for this. This was just, just reality for everyone. Um, and our vision was that everyone in the newsroom knew and accepted that this could no longer be the way uh, of work. And our vision was that uh, journalists will come into the newsrooms in the morning and they were thinking, planning, writing, discussing only um, the articles for the digital channels during that day and that someone else in the evening would take those online articles and make a print edition of that. So that um, was our mission. Um, to, for all these 750 journalists, um, 
regular told you about. Good. So, as you can imagine, having such a big change um, going to happen while you're still covering all the news, for us it was very important to be prepared. So, um, we set out a, quite a tough planning or quite a, quite a strict planning. Actually, for all of you working in more agile ways, which we actually also do, it was a bit difficult to force ourselves to do a... I think in the end it was nearly 50 pages of um, planning of preparation document, but um, we really wanted to make sure that everything goes well, so we wrote it down. So how was the, how was the plan, cha um, the, the change plan? So we first, of course, we prepared everything. Then we had a, a, a beta test with real users outside in January. Then we had the next step would be to migrate one location. So we would go to Burn and have one use paper and change it entirely to the new system. And then once that was completed successfully, one month later we would do the same thing for all the remaining titles and journalists. So that also meant that we had some parallel phase of all the new. Um, in terms of switching, um, we always the, the plan is always to, on the first day we switch the front end, so for the user everything looks new. On the second day we change the entire process in the morning, six o'clock when you start working, that's when the new process starts. And of course we had to do a lot of training. We, ca we could do about 16 people a day, so you can calculate how many days we need to train all those 750 people um, when you have 16 a day. So that's the, the setup, how, how we wanted to support people. So as you heard, it's not just a change of a, of a front end for a user, but it's, it's really a change of the whole way of thinking. So we w really wanted to be there and support everyone as broad as possible. And also we wanted to make sure that they have access to us. So the, the whole support concept was built up that we would go to the newsroom, have a desk in the middle of the newsroom, where people from all different areas, so we had colleagues from the IT, product managers, editorial staff, we had people that did the training on the CMS and the processes, everyone on this desk, so that whoever had a question throughout the day could just walk up to us and say, hey, I have a problem, or this is not working, or how do I do this? But it's also important to, um, or what was also very important to us is that, I mean, one, we had a, a schedule because we had to cover from 6 o'clock in the morning until 11, 12 o'clock at night. That's the time span we, we had to support. And we wanted to be open so that no one feels embarrassed to come and ask a question. Because with these big changes, of course there are questions, but we also didn't want to kind of put someone on spot um, when they had. So you could just walk up to us and say, hey, I have a question, how does this work again? Or I forgot my training was two months ago and I don't really remember how I form it, this and that. So that was the plan we prepared ourselves for. We, um, we actually did that, that whole thing then also in Bern. So um, that was in February 18th. We made the change in Bern and our preparation really worked out very well. Everything worked fine. Until? Until March 13th. So as regular told you, um, the first, let's say, 100 people, we migrated on the new systems and also the new mobile first approach. And then the preparation was going on. And as regular told you, good preparation is everything, but sometimes good preparation is not enough. So then, then came March 13th, and of course it had to be a Friday 13th when the Swiss government decided to send the whole country into a lockdown because of Corona. And so we had, th this was exactly one week before uh, the planned go live for 600 journalists. And that meant for us, maybe you can imagine one week before this uh, big go live, it meant a lot of meetings, a lot of questions, also some criticism out of the newsrooms. Uh, in the meaning of, are you sure to do that big go live when everyone is at home suddenly? Because that was the reality, the new one. Uh, suddenly, from one day to the other, everyone worked from home. And we had to decide if we go with the go live or if we postpone it. And it, 
in the end, we said, and it was a clear decision, yes, we, we do it uh, as we planned because of three reasons mainly. First reason, the journalists in the home office. So um, we were sure that the new process of way of work um, with the mobile first approach would be easier for them because before they had also to do the print finish and the print layout and from home it would be quite difficult. So we thought when we do the new systems we, we finally would have a fast CMS so this would uh, make things much easier for them. Second, they just need a laptop, internet connection and then they can write their articles in the new CMS for online and they don't uh, have to think anymore about print. So that's one point we were sure, okay, this is the right way to do it. Second point, um, the old systems, they came to their limits. We saw on March 16th, it was a Monday, that uh, we had much traffic, the traffic increased very much on our websites. It, I think it was an all-time traffic record on Monday six, uh, 16th of March because of Corona. And the old systems, they were slow and on the limit, so that was the second reason we said, okay, let's go with the go live. And the, the third, but not uh, least, reason was the users on, on the other side. Um, we we saw that they have uh, a very big need of digital prepared information. So we thought with our new systems, the new mobile first approach of working, we have the right answers at the right time. And that's why we said, okay, let's do it. Let's go live with that as planned. But that meant also that we had to be flexible and stretchy like this cute cat. Um, because it was one week, as I told you, b before the go live. We were in the middle of the last trainings for the journalists and those trainings were with physical attendance here uh, in Zurich and Bern, Basel, all the, the spots we have newsrooms. And maybe we had half a day to change that concept to a virtual training concept. So uh, we did this all over Google Meet then the, the last week. But it worked. I think the quality of the trainings uh, was was quite good. We didn't lose much quality. Good. So, as Philip mentioned, um, in the end, it's all about communication. Because um, I think one thing that is important to keep in mind. I mean, for for people working in a more digital environment, um, communicating through digital tools is something that we already did on a daily basis before Corona. So changing that was not such a big difference. However, in the newsrooms, that's actually not the way of working. Not everyone had all those tools installed and was very familiar with it. It's much more a people's business where you just walk up to the other person and discuss everything with them. So, of course, everyone was a bit scared. You know, you were now home. You had your kids at home because they closed school. Everyone was freaking out. So no, probably not everyone had a laptop at home. Um, so it was a whole chaos and at the same time we told them that we are now going to do this huge migration in um, at home so we i think the most important part in communication is we explained why we are doing this and why this is beneficial and we repeated it every single day even though for us we thought hey we've told that to everyone before but if you have such a large group there is always someone that hears it for the first time so, as we saw before, um, the most important part is support. Our whole support system was built up with this desk in the middle, this physical desk in the middle of the newsroom where everyone could walk up. So how do we make sure that we keep this concept of having this one central point where you can go to and get everything, get all the information you need while everyone being at home? Um, so for us, it was really important to keep that central, that central point. And we set up um, a standing Hangout call. Now it's called Google Meet. Um, back then, it was still Hangout. Um, so we had this call that was running from the morning until the evening, where you could just dial in if you had a question. We had Slack channels where you could directly ask questions. We had a landline set up where you could actually call. I think no one ever called us. <coughs> on this landline and what we also did is from all the editorial teams <coughs> we
we identified um, specialists in every team, like the ones that felt most comfortable, and they were also a go-to position for the remaining group of the team if they had a question that they didn't feel comfortable asking in this huge space of Slack where everyone else could look, they could just go and ask their colleagues for first support. Um, so that was our setup. Um, we, I think about the first call we got on Monday morning, that's when we started the change, with someone who called in to the, <coughs> to the chat and wasn't quite sure how to scroll on a Mac because it's a person that has a Windows computer but her partner has a Mac at home. She had to work with the Mac and never scrolled on a trackpad with Mac. And we were all kind of a bit scared and thinking, okay, if this is the setup, if this is what we have to explain people um, of how to scroll with Mac, I don't know how we're going to do this, but luckily that was really the only instance of, of this sort of question. Or maybe they just didn't ask that afterwards anymore. But um, so yeah. Um, as you, if you go to our websites and the apps you see, everything is now new. So we did it, we did it together. It meant a lot of flexibility. It meant a lot of um, kind of extra work or extra effort. So I remember, you probably all remember during lockdown where everyone was doing this walks outside to get outside, outside of, the, of the house. And sometimes you would just reply on Slack to some questions while you were walking outside. But um, really, everyone gave more than 100%, and um, we successfully um, migrated the whole system. So actually, thanks to everyone for, for their flexibility. Maybe a little summary of our talk, four points to take out. Be prepared is everything. Uh, also because you can't know what is tomorrow. <laughs> so we, we were happy to that we were good prepared, well prepared. And be flexible is also important. And then it's all about be, being clear and uh, a good communication. And then at the end, when you uh, had the mi migration, just roll with it. Roll with the systems, roll with the people. Thank you very much. Don't know if there are any questions. Thank you very much. I'm here with the laptop actually because there is a question, so I'm going to read it. Will they ever sell or provide the CMS to other news or media companies and why? Um, at the moment that's not something that is planned to my knowledge. Um, you never know what is happening, um, but it's mostly to do with all other uh, media companies actually also have a setup themselves. So. Um, but if, if there is any media company out there that is interested, I mean, probably we're open to talks. Why not? So that was the only question for this session. Thank you very much, thank Philip. You. Thank you very much, Regula. Thank you. And we see each other at 10 past 10 for the next talk for an external speaker. Thank you. Thank you.